So welcome to the Thor's Hammer Experiment, where electricity meets ice to give a big ass explosion. Well, this is how to do it in reality. This is an experiment devised and demonstrated for the first time on YouTube. And there are a few times when you can say an experiment will be shown in classrooms all over the world for hundreds of years to come. But this is one where it will be. The chemical reaction of alkali metals with water is almost as simple as chemistry gets, so that the alkali metal plus the water, the electrons, the electricity, they flow over to the water and react to give the alkali hydroxide plus hydrogen. And that hydrogen can, with an ignition source, burn or explode. But it turns out that's not what's actually really giving the explosion here because the potassium will quite happily explode on its own underwater where there is no oxygen. And it'll even do it under an argon atmosphere where there is no oxygen. But when doing demonstrations in schools for alkali metals plus water, there are two principal problems. The first is the explosion is erratic. and I mean, it can be really erratic. Secondly, those explosions can be dangerous. 25 degrees. Yeah? Yeah. And just so we're clear on how violent and erratic this explosion can be, this was merely 350 milligrams of sodium. This time you missed the take. Uh, uh, yeah, I missed the take with both. Uh, normally we have this one and a little high-speed camera going, but that is all that's left of our comical flask. The origin of the erratic nature of these explosions mostly comes from the fact that the early stages of this explosion are coulombically driven. That is, you have to reach this tipping point, which is very dependent on having a clean water surface and a clean metal surface in contact. And small amounts of oil or surfactant can significantly inhibit these explosions. Now, it can be kind of tricky seeing as these metals are mostly stored under oil. So it turns out you can get a pretty reproducible explosion from a drop of liquid sodium potassium alloy dropped onto water from about one meter. Or you can get one from firing a clean cut piece of potassium into water. Bummer is there that sodium potassium alloy is really not something that I would recommend to someone without quite a lot of lab experience. And firing potassium into water requires uh, more exotic methods. Like this Nerf gun I designed to be fired for safety reasons by use of a remote controlled car. An interesting variant just requires taping a needle to the underside of a shot glass and then mounting a freshly cut piece of potassium on it, then dropping that into water. That usually delivers the goods. Although you do need a very solid plastic container there, because if you do it on a glass container on a hard surface, this is likely to be the effect that you will get. Try cesium, our fifth alkali metal. which would probably lead you to the erroneous conclusion, if you're doing it with cesium, that cesium is more explosive than the other alkali metals, when in reality, cesium, as with, say, sodium potassium alloy, the key part of the Coulombic explosion happens in about one ten thousandth of a second, as can be seen by those metallic fingers shooting out of the metal. But what would be superb is if there was a reproducible way of safely replicating these alkali metal water explosions. Well, this is it. Good right. Ooh. Yeah, you get 
a hammer. Oh yeah, all good science experiments require a hammer. And then you mount a needle on it using tape and cut a piece of potassium about 0.1 to 0.3 of a gram. That's uh, about the size of an aspirin tablet. Preferably in a flat plate geometry and preferably with a freshly cut face pointing downwards. And then you just hit the block of ice with it. Now, experience has shown that this is one of the safest, most reproducible and dramatic demonstrations of a metal water explosion. Sure, it's not as dramatic as the molten iron ice explosion. But at least you can safely do it at arm's length. The hazards are basically confined to those flying sparks, and they only come out in a plane. So if you're doing this for an audience, obviously you need a safety shield for the audience. And for the guy doing it, obviously a face shield, body covering, and a good glove. And boom, there it is, a reproducible explosion between water and an alkali metal. More interestingly is this is the only instance I know of in the whole of chemistry where you can have two macroscopically separate solid reagents and it still results in an explosion. Normally with this sort of thing, like with gunpowder, you have to grind those reagents really finely to increase the surface area. Not here though, which makes this a double first. It's an explosion out of two solid lumps. And that's it. That's the Thor's Hammer Experiment, brought to you in large part by the patrons of this channel.